Some users may find the following Let's Play content disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everybody, this is Eccentric Charlie once again. I know it's been a while since I did a Let's Play, but I had a lot of personal stuff going on in my life. I had to move. And I also wanted to make sure that the next time I start doing these Let's Plays that I had a better equipment and a green screen, as you can see behind me. So. As, uh, before I start doing um, Gnaw and Order again, I'm going to restart from the beginning and, and have a better quality of, of videos. I'm going to start playing CSI, um, the PC game. I never watched this series, so I don't know nothing about the characters. Maybe here and there some odd stuff right here in, in pop culture. So, I'm going to give it a try. So, let's begin. Welcome to the Las Vegas Crime Lab. Please enter your name. Let's just say Charlie. To yeah, begin try your orientation to with Grissom, click on Start beneath the first case on the left. I tried to do this earlier, but the screen wasn't adjusted correctly and and the audio was very messed up, but I think I got it now that you can see the text, so I don't have to always read it out. I got to the first section, so I'm not really gonna make any clips because I already did and the video was bad, so I'm gonna just start the game. I know his name's Grissom. Welcome to the CSI Crime Lab, Graveyard Shift. I'm Gil Grissom and you must be the new intern. I know it's your first night, but we're short-handed and... Grissom. Yeah, Jim. We're just leaving. We've got a homicide. I know you've got good problem-solving skills or you wouldn't be here. You'll have to jump right in on this crime scene with me. John Webster said, death hath a thousand doors to let out life. Let's find out which one our victim took. The location tab at the bottom of the screen allows you to access various locations. I know, I know. Other crime scene locations will appear here as you uncover more places to visit. Three CSI locations are available on the right, but we'll visit those later. Yeah. For now, we'll go directly to the hotel. I haven't gone there yet. Come on, Good. let's go. Other crime scene locations will appear oh. here as you uncover more places to visit. Three CSI locations are available on the right, but we'll visit those later. For now, we'll go directly to the hotel. Yeah, let's go. First officer, fill us in. Let's see, manager got a call from a guest complaining about noise. He checked it out, found the TV going pretty loud, and this young lady here who didn't exactly need it turned up. No signs of forced entry. Manager's name is Bert Suston. He's pretty bent out of shape, but cooperative enough. You can question him if you want. Wish I had more for you. It's a start. And the crime scene will have plenty to say. Probably a good idea to start with our victim. Throughout the investigation, you will often want to examine things more closely. To look at the body, move your pointer onto it and click. Excellent. Notice that when you passed the pointer over the body, it changed to a green arrow. This indicates that you can inspect something in greater detail. Look at that. There's some bruising on her neck. These marks strongly suggest she was strangled, likely a violent killing. Yeah, I already made a 50 stage a great um, joke. Perhaps uh, there's more we can learn. Notice the case file has been updated. This means that information has been added to a file on a suspect or victim. Click on the case file icon in the bottom right to look at it. Click on the case file icon oh. in the bottom right to look at it. Yeah. Case files hold a summary of everything you've learned about the suspects and victims you meet. This is the file for our victim. To look at the case file for the hotel owner, click on the suspects tab. In addition to general information, suspect case files contain categories for means, motive, and opportunity. You will often need at least one of these filled to be able to get suspects brought in for an interrogation, and all of them for an arrest. Now, click on the Close button. Come on. Let's take a closer look now at the bruising Grissom mentioned. Move yeah. the pointer over the victim's I neck know, on and her click. Neck. 
Notice the Tools tab is automatically selected on the toolbar at the bottom of the screen when you're close enough to use one. Tools are categorized into either Collection or Detection tools. Click on the Detection sub-tab. Rolling over any of the tools light. gives you a brief description of that tool. Find the UV light and double-click on it now. Oh, this is you. Double-clicking gets you a more detailed description of the tool. It looks like it might be the right one for this job. Click on Close. Come on, I know this already. To use the UV light, click once to select it. Now, pass the UV light over the bruised area and click. Now, pass the UV light over the bruised area and click. I am. Deep bruising patterns suggest a ligature, sexual ritual, or premeditated murder. To back out of this close-up view, move the pointer to the left or right-hand side of the screen and click. Notice the pointer changed to an exit arrow when you did that. Now, we'll look at collecting evidence. Click on the torn piece of cloth on the bed, left of the victim. Right, right here, I know. Sometimes, you'll need to search for trace evidence before collecting an object. In this case, select the magnifying scope under the detection tools by clicking on it. Now pass the magnifying scope tool right carefully over the cloth area to look for very small or hidden trace evidence. Looks like a tiny strand of hair. Whenever you find something with a magnifying scope, single click on it for a closer look. Just a hair, right? A tiny thing and yet so very big. Note, it is not the victim's hair color. Someone else was here. In close she could have dyed her hair. The Select the tweezers That's by good. clicking on the collection tool sub-tab, then clicking on the tweezers. Now, move the tweezers over the hair and click. There you go. Evidence you collect is added to your evidence folder. To look at it, click on the evidence tab now. Evidence is categorized here by type. The hair you just collected is a form of trace evidence. Click on the trace print sub tab now. Click on oh, the trace print sub tab I now. The type location. You can re-examine a piece of previously collected evidence here and review what you've learned about it. To re-examine the hair, double click on the hair icon. These evidence descriptions will often update throughout the case, so check them regularly. Click on the close button now. It would be a good idea to collect the torn sheet as well. We're a little too close right now, so exit this close-up view by clicking on either side of the screen. Good. Now One under the collection tool tab, oh. select the rubber gloves. Use the gloves to pick up the torn sheet by clicking on it. Torn from the bed? Easily strangle someone with that. This could very well be our murder weapon. Back out of this close-up view by clicking on either side of the screen. Click on the side of the screen one more time. Well done. Next, we should Talk interview the, the hotel owner behind you. Pan yeah, around the crime scene by moving the cursor to the side of the screen, then click on the owner. Yeah. Look, I know a girl died, and it's a shame. But I got a business to run. Bird Sustin, I manage the hotel. What do you want to know? Questions will often be available for you to ask suspects and victims. The questions will vary depending on the evidence and information you've collected. To select a question, click it with your pointer. Showgirl on a strip. Yep. Nice enough, never made no trouble. Kind of a regular here, made a half dozen visits over the past couple of weeks. No credit cards, strictly cash and carry, capiche? If she had company tonight, I don't know who. My business is minding my own business. No idea. First name was Kylie. Last, uh, well, that kind of varied. Smith, Jones. Seems I remember her using a different name first time she filled out the check-in card. We only give keys out to registered guests. My, uh, patrons don't like to be dropped in on Catch My Drift. And I got the only master key. Sure. I figured you'd want to see it. There's an address on it, too. Now, do you mind? Cops hanging around ain't all that helpful for my business. Exit the conversation by clicking on either side of the screen. 
Now let's look at that new bit of evidence. Click on Documents within your Evidence tab, then double-click the registration card. Click on Documents within your Evidence tab, then double-click the registration card. Oh, yeah. Click on Documents within your Evidence tab, then double-click the registration card. You have just found a new location. Yeah, You'll want to visit it at some point. Close yeah. the pop-up. We will. If you're stuck, you can ask for hints from your CSI partner. Find Grissom in the view above and click your pointer over him. Yeah, just scroll over. There you go. There's a lot of stuff on the ground. What do you want me to look at? Getting help with evidence will update the evidence description with a hint about it. From the evidence tab, click and drag any piece of evidence over Grissom. When you ask for a hint, you may learn something new or something you already know. However, all hints will count against you in your final performance evaluation. Yeah, that's very Click help. close. Now, back out of this view by clicking on either side of the screen. That's the end of your training. The rest is up to you. Okay, you now can process the crime scene further I to find see that the clues, first time. visit the CSI offices, or visit your new location. When you're ready to quit, hit the escape key on your keyboard. Good luck. Oh, do you have to press escape? This is an expensive bauble to leave behind. May rule out robbery as a likely motive. Fingerprint. What? We can't use that here. We can't use that here. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Initials KY engraved on it. KY Jelly. This could help us establish Kylie's identity. Did I get his... Uh... Well, I think the autopsy would be the one to do all that. Well, we know she's a... Hey, there you go. Since the TV was on, somebody probably used this recently. Maybe yeah, the killer. Let's find out. Yeah, uh, I could do this crap. We can't use that here. I can't. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. Really? We can't use that here. Maybe our killer needed to wash his hands of this crime. Let's take a closer look. Some kind of stain on the sink here. We should try to detect what it is. Okay, um, where's my detector? We can't use that here. There we go. You washed his hands. A blood stain pattern, trying to tell its story. Nice find. Yeah. If there was a struggle here, then why no obvious blood on the Vic? We should swab it. No, stop. Get down, cat. Down, cat. None of your shenanigans. There's nothing special there. Try using a similar tool. <laughs> we should definitely have Greg take a look at Get this in the blood lab. Blood sample. I think that's all. Well, the first time I'm gonna go to the 
go to the morgue. So, you're Grissom's latest victim, huh? Well, I'm in charge of the victims who aren't still walking around. Albert Robbins, welcome aboard. I'll do my best to answer your questions. How our Vic died, what the murder weapon was, maybe even the deceased's identity. And remember, I'm dealing with trace evidence you weren't even aware of at the crime scene. So don't be a stranger. When you need information about the body, just ask. Okay. What was the time after of death? death? A human body generally drops two degrees the first hour and another degree every hour after that, with a four hour give or take. Given the core temperature of the victim's liver and the ambient temp at the crime scene, I estimate she was killed between 11 and 11.30 p.m. Hmm. What was the cause Asphyxia of death? Asphyxia due to strangulation. The hyoid bone, just under the bruising on her neck, was broken. Oh. Quick death, anyway. Yeah. I found traces of skin under three of her nails. Not a lot, but enough to indicate she may have been trying to fight off her assailant. Found some money stuffed in her mouth, which you can also take with you. Any loss of blood from the there victim? There are petechiae in the victim's eyelids, tiny pinpoint hemorrhages caused when the blood backs up into the capillaries. But with an internal injury like this, you won't have much, if any, of the victim's blood at the scene. Any blood you find is more likely the killer's. Okay. What can you tell us about the bruising on her neck? Fairly narrow ligature marks like these might indicate a rope or cord or even a twisted length of sheet was used. Okay. Anything else out of the, ordin out the ordinary we should know? I don't know if you knew this already, but our victim had hepatitis C. Oh, dude. Found interferon in her system. Nothing else unusual. Very healthy young woman otherwise. As you got that, um, Pamela Anderson stuff. Okay, I'm going to end it right here for this particular scene. And I'll be back f when I go into the other, when I go into the lab. Please, please watch the next video.